you are watching Well of the Fathers. Welcome to Kingdom Teaching Series. Uh, this day we are teaching on spiritual growth. And we are focusing on the place of the menorah for our growth. Uh, when I talk about menorah, I'm talking about the lampstand. It can also be called the candlestick or candle light. So it's place for our growth. Or in other words, I could say the place of the Holy Spirit for our growth. Hallelujah. Now, after being saved, what I mean by being saved, our encounter with Christ at new birth. Now, what is necessary for every man that comes into this world is new birth. New birth is necessity for every man. Now, because every man that came into this world came as a child of the devil, not as a child of God. So he was bettered by another life. Praise God. Now I can give you uh, the physical or the graphic. Now you see, the world is like a globe. And when you check the spermatozoa, it's like a tiny serpent. So that means that another serpent has entered the earth. That's why Jesus will look at the uh, uh, at the scribe in front. He said, "Brood of vipers." John also called them "brood of vipers." In John, Jesus said that you are of your father, the devil. Why would Jesus say you are of the father, the devil? I mean, why would Jesus say fair? To the Jews, you are of your father, the devil. Praise God. He said, you are of your father. When you speak, you speak like your father. He said, he, he, he is of the, of the, of the, when he speak, he speak lies. No truth in him. You are the offspring of Satan. But you see, we must begin to appreciate new birth with great respect. That's why Yeshua said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. So there is a new creation. Children born, not of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. 1 Peter 1.23, being born again, not of corruptible seed. You see, the seed that produced the natural man is corruptible seed. That's not God's seed. Not of corruptible seed, he said, but of the incorruptible seed by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Hallelujah. So being born again is introducing another man, spiritual man on earth. It's a new creation. He's born anew. He's a child of God. As many as receive him, he gave them the power to become the source of God. So by, by the virtue of becoming the source of God, you are, you, are, you are made to sit together with Christ in the heavenly places. Now, if I give birth to a child, automatically the child is from my town. If you ask him or her, where are you from? Hallelujah. That's why because I am given birth by God, I am a citizen of heaven. My citizenship is of heaven. I am of God. That's what Jesus said to them. You are of your father, the devil. We must have the spiritual understanding and then see the necessity why we must be born again. Praise God. So I'm seated together. I have the nature of God. I have the nature of righteousness. Hebrew report said, Holy brethren, partakers of the heaven. Why would he call them the holy brethren? Because they are born by God. Holy brethren. Ephesians 1 3. It says, uh, Blessed be the Lord God who has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. So I am born full of God. I'm born with the life of God. 
and born receive, or if his fullness we receive, grace upon grace. Hallelujah. So being born of God is, uh, is, is, is the most important thing that can happen to any man on earth. It's higher than graduating from Harvard without Christ. It's higher than graduating from Cambridge without Christ. It's higher than graduating from business school without Christ. I pray that you will, you will see the magnificency, the splendor of being born of God. Now, after being born of God, that gives you a standing God, seated together with him in the heavenly places, put on Christ. You carry all the blessings of God. Now, after that, the next thing in your life, the next pursuit is the pursuit of growth, spiritual growth. Pursuit of growth, spiritual growth. The pursuit of growth. Now, you don't grow except encounter with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, you have to check something. Uh, the grand design for our journey in God, the oracle given to Moses called the tabernacle. Now, the, in the tabernacle, there are three courts, the outer court, the inner court, and the most holy place. Now, at the outer court, praise God, that is where our being born again takes place. At the brazen altar, the lamb is being sacrificed. That's why Yeshua become our Passover. John introduces, behold, the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the earth. Then after that, that's why when Yeshua came to earth, he said, I am the way. So Yeshua is the way to God. You can't come to God without Christ. So when he said, I am the way, he was saying, I am the ministry of the outer court. Because that is where you start to come to God. And because a priest is journeying from the outer court, is journeying to the most solid place, the place of the fullness of God, a place of full divinity. So he start the journey there from the outer court, a bloody place where the blood has been smelled. And, and then you come to the love and watches himself. Then as he enter the holy place, the first encounter is what they call the menorah, the candlelight. Now the candlelight is to give you light, is to show you light in the realm where you are. Now because your mind is so dark that you can't see spiritual things, that you can't see light. Now have you taken note that when someone is born again, Apostle Paul begins to pray for him. To all churches, to Ephesian church, things ahead of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the sin. I cease now to pray for you, making mention of you in my prayers that God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, revelation in the knowledge of Christ, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know the hope of the calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? Hallelujah. Praise God. Now what was he saying? He was speaking on the administration of the candlelight. The administration of the menorah. Now because the Holy Spirit is to tutor you is to tutor you, to lecture you in the things of, of God. That's why Jesus said, I know you won't understand all of this as I'm saying, but when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you to the truth. He will guide you. Now that's why, you know, some encounter Christ and they remain at that level. No light, no encounter with the menorah. They can't but become religious in their walk. They become religious in their approach. So those who fail to advance by the Holy Spirit, they get back to the things that even fight their faith. Things that will make them not to grow. Now because Satan 
hate your faith in Christ. So he doesn't want you to see. That is why his assignment was to veil things so that you wouldn't see. The things that God concealed. So you need to journey in and have encounter with the menorah. The candlestick is a seven branch, just lamp, lamp. Hallelujah. Praise God. That shine, that, that shed light, that gives light in the holy place. That's actually the Holy Ghost giving us light. He shed a light on the shoe bread that we feed for growth, spiritual growth. So with that encounter with him, to another church, Colossians say, since I had this thing, I begin to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you walk worthy unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, being fruitful in every good work, then increasing in the knowledge of God. So I can't be fruitful if I don't have encounter with the menorah, with the candlelight. So his assignment is to shed light, to give me the light of God, to begin to make me to have understanding in the taste of the Spirit. You must understand that the kingdom of this world is not the same with the kingdom of God. The law that governed this earth, the law of sin and death, is not the same with the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ. So there's a law in this room, there's a law in this room. So the spirit of the air, tutors men in this world, teaches them how to lie. That's why you don't teach a child to lie. A child grew up knowing evil. There are entities that rest. We walk according to the course of this world. After the order of the princes of air. It was an ordinary that a child learned him because his mind was bad. So as he come, entities begin to tutor him. Tutor the child. Are you surprised how a child can lie? He was taught by the spirit. Are you surprised why a child can, you know, steal? He was taught by the Spirit. So now we are in the kingdom of God. God's Spirit has to teach us judgment of God. They have to teach us the ways of God. Menorah light is to shine upon us. That is what we encounter as we enter the holy place. It has seven candle light. Amen. That's why in Isaiah says, and the spirit of the Lord. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Now you can't live on earth without God's spirit. This is what single Yeshua how to live. You know, we talk in a um, daily walk broadcast on how to live spiritually. So you can't actually live as God specified without the spirit. That's why in Isaiah chapter 42, he said, Behold my servant, my spirit is in him. My spirit, I have put my spirit in him. Then, you know, in Isaiah 11, he said, uh, 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 um, You know, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of him, and uh, the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. You see now, the spirit of the Lord. Wisdom and understanding, the first two branches. Wisdom and understanding. That's why Paul, you know, was praying the spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of the Lord. Might and cancer. You are strengthened with all might. That you may know. Cancer. Hallelujah. Then of knowledge, of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, if we make him of a freak of understanding, he will be going to teach him the judgment of God. He will be teach him how to live by the Spirit of God, how to excel, how to advance. He will be going to teach him the things of God. That's why a spiritual man, the Bible says he knows all things, he judges all things, and is judge of no man. Why? Because God has taught him by the Spirit of God. How did Moses come to know? How did Moses come to know? There must be an encounter he had. 
even when he was at the palace, there must be an encounter. Because it was not ordinary that you should just know that the slavery, the Bible said when, uh, by faith, Moses, now you see, it was by faith, that means he has encountered something at the palace. So by faith, Moses has to know the things that appear to have no value. He saw the ordinance of God. So when God's spirit is in us, we'll be able to discern the things that are of God, the things that are of value spiritually. This is why we have to esteem. We have to esteem the saint because of the ordinance of God. It does not matter how poor a friend is, a brother is, you have to value him because of the riches and the treasures of God in him. So when we begin to grow spiritually, one of the signs is that we value the spiritual things. We know the value. We know things that are of God. Now, I want us to read 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Now, however, we speak the wisdom of, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. So we speak wisdom among them who are mature. So we don't speak wisdom of God. To those who are not mature. Yeshua said, don't cast your pearls before the pigs. Don't take things of value. God stated that they are something precious, like the anointing oil, shouldn't be put upon strangers. They don't know the value. They don't understand it. They will desecrate it. They will devalue it. Hallelujah. So the things of God, now we speak wisdom to them that are mature. Praise God. Yet not the wisdom of this age. We don't communicate the wisdom of this age. We communicate the wisdom that is from God. In case you do not understand, the wisdom of this world is coming to nothing. Hallelujah. Who are coming to nothing? The wisdom of this age who are coming to nothing. I don't care where you are quiet, it's coming to nothing. That is a wisdom that is so dead even for the age to come. That's why our heart is after the wisdom of God. What Holy you know, you know, Ghost will teach us. What He will teach us is the things that are of Christ. The wisdom of God. That's why in that Isaiah He said, and the sort of wisdom, that wisdom will not teach you the wisdom of this world. He won't teach you the things of this world. He will communicate to you the things of the Spirit. They are not much consigned of the things of this earth. They are much consigned of the heavenly things. You know, I remember Kenneth E. Hagen one time uh, said that when he went to the heaven, he saw his late sister and she began to ask him of her son. You know, he was asking how the guy was doing well spiritually. And Kenneth Hagin was wondering that she was not asking about the earthly things, his uh, education, his way being, and all of those things. So he called her attention. He said, from up there, we are not seeing those things. We are not seeing those things. So those things are not of much value to us. Our values are the things of the Spirit, are the things of God. Praise God. So here... He said, but we speak wisdom of God in a mystery. Hallelujah. So all the mysteries that Christ was speaking, they are the wisdom of God. That's why he said that the word I speak unto you, they are spirit. So they are the wisdom of God. So the communication of God's word is a communication of wisdom. That's the reason those that hear the word of God, they attend to wisdom. He that heard my sins and dwelt in me said, wise man. So God's word is wisdom. God's word. So when it is not God's word, it is not wisdom. So we should separate religions. We should separate traditions from the word of God. Ideas of men. Concept of men. Theories of men. That's even, even principles of men. They are not of God. Hallelujah. This is awesome. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. He ordained it before the ages 
for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age, of this age knew for of this age knew for they for had they knew known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it's, it is written, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Hallelujah. Nor have it entered the heart of any man the things which God has prepared. So there's a preparation, or there are preparations of God for those who love Him, for those who love His appearing, for those who love the things of the Spirit. There are those who love the things of the Spirit, and there are those who the things of God, it, 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 it makes no sense to them. It makes no sense to them. Like I always say, one of the signs of maturity, when you see anything that has the ordinance of God, you reverence it. That is one thing about the Israelite. They know the things of God. Hallelujah. They know the things that are of the Spirit. And we must learn to reverence them. We must learn to honor them. Oh, she never do. Woman saw Elisha. He said, I perceive that this man is a holy man of God. Let's make a room for him. I just perceive that. You must know the things that God honor. You must know the things that God honor. Forsaken not the assembly of the brethren. Forsaken not the garden. God honors such things. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to do it together. Hallelujah. A fool may not know the value. He wants to be alone. He wants to stay on his own. But the wisdom of God is that we gather together and be together and be one. A fool does not understand fellowshipping with his brother. As long as he is a brother. Hallelujah. Whether he is smelling, whether he doesn't have anything, as long as he is a brother, Paul has to Paul wrote to Philemon, now Onesimus is a brother. Don't receive him as a slave anymore. Receive him as a brother. He is a brother. Even though he will stay and walk with you with the rest of the other slave, but receive him as a brother, not as a slave. So we must understand how spiritual things work. Even in our days, we still have this, this mentality, these things of this world. It has encroached in the mind of the same. Don't treat any man as second class. Don't carve out some things for you to enjoy and carve out, you know, you know, inferior for others to enjoy. Don't carve out what you and your household will enjoy and others who are not part of your household will not enjoy that. That is the concept of the devil. That is not God. You are undermining the divinity in them. You are undermining the Godhood in them. Now because one of the strategies and the workings of devil is to undermine the image of God in us. So don't be part of that. Don't be part of that. A man sang a song. They call it a worldly song, but there is death of God in them. He said, until the philosophy, which would one race inferior and the other superior, is finally abandoned, discarded, until a man will no longer be known by the color of his eyes, by the color of his skin. That is a war. That war is to be fought even in the body of Christ. To be spiritual is to reverence God in any man. Is to honor God. He's a career of the Spirit of God. He's a career of God. A career of God. Hallelujah. So what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard. But God has revealed them, you know, to us by His Spirit. So these things are being revealed by the Spirit of God. That's why if you are not in touch with the Spirit, you can't know the things that are of God. At best, you bet religious things, even the things that fight the faith. Even the things that will fight the faith of the faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no man knows the things of God 
No man knows the things of God except by the Spirit of God. You can't know the things of God until God begins to reveal it to you. That's why you need to wait for the revelations of God. He will judge not after the sight of eyes. He will not reprove after the hearing. Jesus never walked like that. A woman was caught in adultery. Jesus didn't judge by what he heard. He judged by the Spirit of God. The Scripture says he bent down right in. I believe he was asking, Lord, what are you saying? The Spirit of wisdom, what are you saying? Mind, what are you saying? Cancel, what are you saying? And they say she deserved forgiveness. So Jesus came and gave the verdict of the Spirit. The verdict of God. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. A, a man who has gospel, he judges spiritually. He said things from the realm of the spirit. He said things from the realm of the spirit. His life is being navigated by the candlelight. They are called the source of oil in uh, Zechariah. You see that oil is supplied into the bowl. You see, the oil is supplied. You see, that is your light. The seven candlestick is our light. Paul said, my desire is to make all men to see. So it's the Holy Spirit that makes us to see the things that are of God. You can't come to the place of spiritual maturity if you're not being aided by the Holy Spirit. If you don't run by the light, Yeshua said, I am the light of the world. I am the light. He that followeth me will not walk in darkness. If you are not abraced, if you are not following God's spirit, you will be trapped in darkness. You will be trapped in darkness. That's why you must be consistent. You must keep abreast. You must be following the emphasis of the of heaven. Emphasis of the spirit. Every time you must not be left behind. You must not be no left behind. That's why I love that scripture in uh, Ephesians 5. See them that you walk circumspect, not as a fool as a wise. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Therefore, do not be wise. Understanding the mind of the Spirit. Understanding what the will of God is. Understanding the will of the Spirit. You can know it. The things of God are spiritually packaged. I love that. Praise God. So for no man knoweth these things, even the things, hallelujah, now we have received. I love that. Now we have received. We have received. We have received. I have God's spirit in me. I want to say that I have God's spirit in me. I have it. I'm not about to have it. I have it. The Spirit of God doeth in me. They don't visit me and go. They doeth in me. He doeth in me. The Spirit of God doeth in me. I am the temple of God. The reason why I'm the temple of God is for the uh, Spirit of God to do it in me. Now we have received, I love that, not the Spirit of the world, but the, uh, but the Spirit who is from God. But the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that has been freely given to us that we might know the things that have been given to us that we might know that we have been called to rest that the rest of God has been offered to us that's why Paul said that, 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 I, that you, know, you know I tremble let no man come short of this let no man come short of the rest of God just as they came short of it in the wilderness they were deceived by the dragon they were deceived by what they see and what they heard they had evil report. They had a report that deprived them of entering the rest of God. Israel would have entered the rest of God because that time was actually 50 jubilee from Adam. So it was a time of a perfect jubilee for them to enter the rest of God. Now Paul said in Hebrew 3.19, he says, so we see they could not enter because of unbelief. So what God's spirit does is to empower us. Empower us to walk in faith, not by sight. We walk in faith. You can't walk by faith except by the Spirit of God. Except by the Spirit of God. You can't walk by faith. 
So, we know the thing is freely given to us. We know that the health has been given to us in God. We know that life has been offered to us. Peace has been, has been offered to us in Christ. Boldness has been offered. Dominion has been offered to us in Christ. So we cannot access them by the Spirit of God, by the light of His Spirit. Of Praise God. These things we also speak, not in words, which man's, man's wisdom teaches, but the Holy Spirit teaching teaches comparing spiritual things with spirit. We don't compare spiritual things with the natural. We don't. That's why we don't compare a man, a man of God, a man of his spirit, by the outward, by natural accomplishment, by the houses, by the cars, by all. They are not the yastic to judge him. His measure is by the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's his measure. Because Yeshua told a parable of a man who had bountiful harvest. He said to his soul, relax, eat and drink and all of those things. And that same night, uh, God came and said, I require a soul who will own all of these things. He said, so is a man who is rich in this world and is not rich towards God. So we don't compare the things of this world. But you see, in the world they esteem you, they value you. Hey, he has built a house. Hey, he has bought a car. Hey, he has done all of this. Now, all of those things are good. Hallelujah. But they are not your measure. They are not who you are. They are to aid you, to give you a level of comfort, now so that you can, you can go for the real thing. You can go for, that's why seek for the kingdom of God, his righteousness, then all other things will be added. There are things to be added. And they are very necessary because Yeshua said, having raiment and food, let us therefore be contented. Hallelujah. Now, I love this, not compare spiritual to spiritual, but the natural man does not receive. He cannot receive the things of the Spirit. He cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness to him. He doesn't know the value. He doesn't know the value of a man who is full of God. He doesn't know the value of a man who had the, 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 the order, who carries God. That's why he can value a natural man. So sorry to say this, some of our, our sisters, they are vulnerable of this. They fall victim of this. They don't see a man. They just say the man is in, in uh, Europe. The man is in U.S. The man is in UK. That's enough to be the right husband. The man has house in a VGC. Now, that's enough for them. Because they judge by what they see. And when the menorah is walking in us, we don't walk by what we see. We don't walk by the sight. We walk by the Spirit of God. So we, 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 we read things in the natural. They don't judge like that in heaven. Hallelujah. I was telling a, a story of a Kennedy Hagin. Praise God. Amen. How he um, you know, he went to heaven and the, and, and the sister that died began to ask him about his son. Spiritually, he was wondering, he wasn't asking about it now. He said in heaven we don't see natural things. We only see spiritual things. Praise God. So he does not have the capacity to receive. So don't blame them. They don't have it. They can't see it. So the Spirit of God given to us and, you know, you know, capacitated us to receive the things of God. That's why we can receive counsel. We can receive wisdom. We can receive all the nations of God. So we are empowered. Our hand has been made strong by the hand of the Almighty to receive the things that are of God. So menorah is important in our growth. God's spirit is important. So if any man want to experience growth spiritually, because they have to teach you the things of the spirit. They have to teach you God. You see, when you are at the kindergarten level, that's a level will be God won't teach you. Honestly, because Isaiah chapter 2, it says that, you know, whom shall he teach wisdom? Whom will he cause to understand knowledge? He said, those that have been weaned from me, separated from breast. So God come to teach you. You can see somebody who is a, 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 
locked up with material. Everything he sees is the material. And you are teaching him the depth in God. You are just giving him what he cannot receive. You are giving your pearls. You know, you are casting your pearls before the peak. Before the peak. In fact, a man who does not have Christ is being referred as a peak. He doesn't know things of the Spirit. So the essence of the menorah is to guide us. We see the revelation of God. We see Christ. Paul wrote to all churches. Oh, Colossian church, Philippian church. Hallelujah. He wrote the same message today. You know, to all the churches as we have seen to the Ephesian church. As he's not to pray for you. To the you know, Colossian church also. So he prayed for virtually, you know, all the church. Now in uh, Philippians, I, and I pray that your love may abound more and more in all knowledge and in all discernment, that you may prove the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense in the day of Christ, being filled, being filled with the fruit of righteousness, which are by Christ Jesus, to the glory and praise of God. Be filled with the Spirit. For say this I said then, that to walk in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20, verse 17, I believe. He said, this then I say, and testify in the Lord, that from henceforth you should not walk as the rest of the Gentiles. You should not walk like the Gentiles. So you can't be in the faith and walk like the Gentiles. So that's what he called Gentilic walk. That's why Jesus says something very significant in, in, in Matthew. He said, take note of what to eat and what to wear. These are what the Gentiles seek after. They don't have purpose in God. They only have after what to eat, what they wear. That's their agenda. How to have good time. That's their agenda. No God agenda in their life. You are vanity. You are vanity. You are vain. He said, who will come to the mountains of God is a person that have not lifted his heart to vanity. How can you lift a heart to vanity? Apostle Paul in Hebrew said, it is good for a heart to be established on grace, not on food, which have not profited any man. You see, people that earn salary, any money, they spend all in food. That's so pathetic. That's so pathetic. Their souls... You know, you know, concern on them. These are the kind of person they are after. Their belly. Whose God is their belly. Whose God, their own God is their belly. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at this I say then. And testify the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles. From now onward, I also say this to you. Don't live without purpose. Don't live without God. Don't live without being consumed by God's agenda, God's purpose, the will of God. Jesus came on earth. He wasn't concentrating on what to eat and what to wear. He concentrated on the purpose of God. Let not your agenda just be subject to what to eat and what to wear. That's a sign of immaturity. That's a sign there is no life in you. There's no life in you. Well, all your agenda. That's what, you see, the government of this world is not even our government. No matter how good the government of this world is, they won't give you divinity. All that they will give you is a matter of what to eat. Every government that comes in draws agenda for what to eat and what to wear. Poverty alleviation. Operation feed the nation. Austerity measure. All of those things are naturally, you know, revolved. No agenda for the thing. That's why we're praying for the kingdom of God to come upon the earth. So that the agenda of God will be wrought in the earth. Don't walk as the rest of the Gentiles. How do they walk? In the futility of their mind. Emptiness of their mind. Having their understanding darkened. Their understanding. There's no light. That's why Yeshua is a light given to every man that covered into this world to live. So we need the light of the menorah to live. The light of the menorah is necessity. So that light has to burn in you. Yeshua was the lamp. You see, when you see a lamp, the lamp is vibrating. It's a sign that it's alive. There are people you see, you know they're alive. There are those you see, there's no life in them. When they talk, you don't see life. You don't see life. You can enter a place, see somebody talk, you know the depth of God. You know he's seeking for something. You know he's pursuing something. 
I remember when I read a book authored by a man, the man that folded that book said, the first time I saw this man standing, I saw somebody going somewhere. So you could see the writings of God. So when the writings of God are not you, they, he said, my pen are like the ready writers. <laughs> Hallelujah. You must stay so that the Holy Ghost will write you. Will write on you. Will write on you. And that is the new Testament, I will write on you. I will write on you. That's the, the Holy Ghost want to write. Holy, you know, he want to write God. He want to write on you. He want to configure your mind. He want to configure your mind. He want your, your mind to be functionality, to be functioning in the realm of the Spirit. Having the understanding taken, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling and giving themselves over to lewdness to walk all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not learned so in Christ. Oh my God, this is so terrible. Past feelings. The, 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 the spirit of work in them. You could just see a man wake up. I just feel like marrying a dog. I just feel like dog to be my husband. I just feel like marrying a man. A man, a woman, I just feel like, man, who's past feeling? They can feel anything. God's spirit, there's no, nothing that checks them. Nothing that checks them. So we must raise standard of God in our soul. Our soul must carry the standard of God. The measure of the stature of the fullness, being past feeling, giving themselves. That's what the Bible says, God gave them over unto a reprobate mind to do those things which seems good to them. How can you marry a man? What's the pleasure? I don't understand this thing. It's demonic. A man feeling man. <laughs> Hallelujah. A woman feeling a fellow woman. If you tell me that a man, probably spiritual, feel a woman, a crisis, natural. In a Roman from person, without natural affection. So when we are not growing, Spiritually, there's a tendency to be overtaken by the other spirit. There's a tendency for that. So there's a place of menorah, the candlelight, in our walk with God. We have not so learned in Christ. So now, why have they not learned in Christ? Because they were not being taught by the Holy Spirit. I have said it several, I think I've said it before, that, 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 that the Holy Spirit is the custodian. He has the monopoly of things that are of Christ. He's the only one that can give it to you. He's the only one. That's why he guides us to the truth. And we are to live by the truth of God. We are to function by the truth. And that's why we must pay attention to him. I run off by saying what Paul said. May the grace of God the love of Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the koinonia, the koinonia, the intimacy, the fellowship of the menorah be with you. Always fellowship. That's why they, 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 they pray. He, he lighted. That, that, that lamp must be burning. It must be born in continuously. So the, 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 the light of God will not go off. That's why you have to be supplying wood. The word is saying, where there is no wood, the fire will go off. Stay in God's presence. Stay with the word of God. Stay in prayer. Stay in fellowship with fervent believers. Stay in fellowship with father and believers. These are pathways to grow. Stay in the world. Stay in prayer. As we stay in the world, judgment is coming. As we stay in prayer, the things we take in, that being quick in life, comes on them. Understanding come. Holy Spirit, breathe upon them. And this is the only way that we, we can have accurate and superlative functionality. That's how we can exercise our God dominion upon the earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. May the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us continuously in Yeshua's name. God, 
bless you. Watch out for the uh, part two of this message in our kingdom series. Yahweh bless you. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen.